that you are part of the artwork. So in a funny way, Scriptorium, the piece that's behind me, is a perfect juxtaposition of things that are extremely intimate. You know, that a book is something that's designed to be seen 18 inches away, and many of these drawings you have to look at that closely to really get what's in it, but then by the time you have a lot of them up, it's almost overwhelming just to see so much of this. Step one, you're creating the concept of these ten panels. Step two, putting the um, copper leaf on all of them and then oxidizing it so that it would have this kind of uh, feeling of going in and out and of being old and uh, distressed. Not distressed psychologically, but distressed in the sense of having been used. The next step was putting the flowers on and arranging this using chance operations, arranging their placement from the very far left in early spring to the very far right in later spring. And then the last step was uh, putting in the rectangles of gold, silver, gold leaf, silver leaf, and mica in the backgrounds, so again using chance operations. So essentially there's only three steps, but what it yields is a very complex result. So I'm always interested in simplifying the uh, parameters in order to achieve something that has a greater degree of complexity. The other thing that I really like is flowers tend to be what amateurs start with, usually in a painting class. Some the teacher puts a bunch of zinnias in a vase with an orange next to it and you paint it depending on your skill level. So there's a, something a little debased about flower painting in the West. And if most people, if you say, well, who are the great flower painters? They draw black. If you say, who, is the, who are the great abstract painters? Everyone has their list, or the great figurative painters. But flower painting, it's a little tricky, and there are many. I mean, there are many wonderful artists who have painted flowers very seriously. So I kind of like that, that it's a little bit of a, something that people are very quick to dismiss. And so it, the challenge then becomes, can I take this thing that most people don't want to look at and turn it into something, you know, really monumental and possibly even uplift? I would like the people taking the workshop to learn new ways of looking at subject matter for their work and consequently new ways of looking at the world, looking close up with the wonderment of a child. But then you, you gaining skills so that they can put that close scrutiny and observation into um, a kind of reality that's useful for them.